Anchai Comic Guy here with another Comicsgate unboxing, and today, who do we have? We have Riot Press Production. Okay, I believe I know what this bad boy is gonna be. So let's go ahead, let's crack this thing open, and let's see if I've received what I think I've received. First off, let's go ahead and get those tops and bottoms. Pull it off page just to get that edge. There we go. Don't dox myself. And we're back again. Sorry about the little technical issue. Uh, as soon as I saw the front where it said that this was from Riot Press, I knew this was going to be from Patrick Thomas Parnell. Always good to get something from Johnny Phantasm. And what's good about this is that uh, this is actually the first, the sequel to the very first book that I ever reviewed here on Inch High Comic Guy. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at our content. First things first, we got this uh, poster. Not a great poster. In fact, it's uh, pretty mediocre, actually. Uh, it's like, it's not worth framing, it's not worth putting up. It didn't come in... Uh, Packaging that would avoid creases, so Poster's kind of a wash. Not even gonna care about that uh, Always we have some internal content Sorry for bumping the camera get rid of that so There's the comic book itself right there I have to apologize the microphone is between me and the camera so I'm having to try to feel this out to make sure I'm putting things where they belong. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and put that over there so you can see that. And let's take a look at what we got here. We've got a couple of the poker chips. I don't know if I got a rare one. Um, there we go. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I got a rare one. I got... An orange and two reds. Uh, this one is the 20,000 Johnny Phantasm one. With uh, the little image. I don't know if I get it up here. You can see it. But it's got the image of the uh, extra dimensional sorcerers or whatever. So there's those guys. Uh, we've got this one, which is the orange pumpkin one. And we've got uh, this Vote for Johnny, 1985. So, we're a year off as far as that's concerned, but cool deal. Just like last time, we got some cards. We have this card that is just our dear good friend, Johnny Phantasm. We've got uh, this uh, Garbage Pail Kid styled card for the Scarlet Heart. We've got this, um, another Garbage Pail style kid for Eveline. Uh, Johnny Don't Care, Johnny Phantasm card, and this Pumpkin Monster. Apparently, if you combine these, you've got, uh, Cecil. So... Can put these together to put together a little Cecil picture. So, there we go. That that's the uh, internal content as far as that's concerned. Which means, of course, at this point, I'm gonna need to stop and actually read this comic book. Uh, I was really hoping there would be some improvement as far as the quality of the paper is concerned. But this is still newsprint. This is like 1988 quality, you know, papers as far as comic books are concerned. So that's that's consistent, but uh, ain't too cool. Uh, artwork looks good. Let's hope that the story is a little bit more coherent, a little bit better than it was on the original Johnny Phantasm, which, you know, while interesting, was also kind of a mess. It was good enough to make me want to try the second book, but if this book isn't at least a 3 out of 5, I don't think I'm going to be buying the next one because, hey, I, I don't just buy these things because cool artwork, bro. You better have a story in there that's worth reading. 
So anyways, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pause the video here and through the magic of editing, I'll be right back. Well, I just got done reading Johnny Phantasm, and I will say this. Johnny Phantasm 1985 is a better written book than the previous version of Johnny Phantasm. The, again, as I mentioned earlier, the production quality of the actual book itself is pretty cheap, but it's also a very reasonably sized book. So I can understand, you know, skimping on some things in order to try to save money, not only for the creator, but also for the consumer. Just like last time, this was done by Evan Posios and Patrick Thomas Parnell. And, well, let's go over the scores. Obviously, the packaging, we have a 3 out of 5 as far as that's concerned. In fact, let's bring out the calculator. Let's just put it right there. 3 out of 5 on the calculator. Is that in frame? That's in frame. Three out of five on the calculator for the packaging uh, because it came in a Gemini mailer and that's exactly what you should expect from any Comicsgate book. The cover artwork, there were three different covers and I got the one that was actually done by Patrick Thomas Parnell and uh, it ain't good. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's not a terrible cover, but it's not good. It, it basically, this is a graphical summary of the entire story in the, on the actual cover itself, which only has context to you as a reader if you read the book. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything to you. The purpose of the cover is to sell the book, and that doesn't happen here. This cover does not sell this book in any way, so... Get the plus key, we're going to give the cover a 2 out of 5 stars. It's, it's just not very good. This brings us to the interior artwork. And the interior artwork, uh, it's consistent with the type of artwork that we got last time. And it is of similar quality. Just like last time, we have it splitting between... Uh, full page spreads and then individual pages. The problem here is that he's mixing and matching now. Obviously, Patrick Thomas Parnell is trying to be experimental as far as his panel work is concerned. And unfortunately, it is to the detriment of the book. Uh, let me go ahead and give you an example. Now, first off, let's take a look at this one. This is a two page spread. You have this key component here in the center representing the sorcerers and then it goes in this kind of circular fashion this is where the experimental panel work actually is working unfortunately this is the exception and not the rule uh like here it's a two panel spread so am i going from here to here and then to here or am I going from here to here and here to here to here to here? You have a hard time being able to tell how you should be reading the paneling on this book. And that is not helpful. Uh, if we come over later on to what I think is probably one of the worst offenders in the book. Uh, let's see here. Okay. This one, this page right here. This page is awful. Great artwork, piss poor panel work. Because the way you look at it, you would assume you're going to go from here to here to here, and then here to here to here. No. You actually are supposed to go from here and down, then here, then here and down. And it gets steadily worse. Here, you literally are reading the page in a circular fashion. You're starting here, you're coming down here, it spreads across the entire page, and now we're going this direction. So we're going here, 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 which doesn't make sense, because if we're going in a circular fashion, it should be going that way, but, you know, hey, we're not. And then we're coming up to here with this secret passage. So what ends up happening is I'm reading the book, I go down here, this thing is just like a single action scene. So I don't care about this. And we, again, wasted space with this little bullet fire tappity tap tap. 
And then I start over here, only to find out I need to go read it this direction. If this comic book had an editor, the editor would have come in and put arrows on all the pages just to help the reader understand what direction they need to be going in order to read the bloody book. So, this, this is not good. Um, no. The artwork is actually hindered by the panel work. And while the artwork itself, uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell's, you know, actual stylized artwork is consistent with the previous issue, but the piss poor panel work actually ruins it. Consequently, I'm actually only going to give the artwork two out of five stars. So, plus two. Because the artwork is just not very good. And again, I, I have a caveat. Is it? The artwork individually, individually per page, the artwork is just fine. It's inconsistent. I mean, for example, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this page here uh, with his mom. And then we can pair that to her on this page. You know, that, that is not consistent as far as the quality and style the artwork is concerned. So, the artwork is inconsistent, and worse, the panel work is garbage. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give the artwork on this thing, like I said, 2 out of 5 stars. Uh, where it's good, it's actually exceptional. Where it is bad, it is god-awful. It is completely inconsistent, and the experiment, the failed experiment, as far as the panel work is concerned, is incredibly frustrating. Uh, that brings us to the coloring. The coloring, once again, is mediocre. And the big reason the coloring is mediocre is because, you know, again, you know, all this stuff here, I mean, it literally looks like someone pissed all over... The actual film print, you know, that 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 that's what this reminds me of. It looks like there's a yellow filter on the camera when they were actually taking pictures of the artwork in order to go ahead and get it produced. You know, I I know I know we don't do that anymore. We scan everything in, but still, that's that's what it reminds me of. Uh, the coloring again for the type of material that the book is made on. Uh, it's it's fine depending on the individual page that you're looking at, but again, this is 1980s coloring. And where it's good, it is, you know, again, it's good. Uh, but unfortunately, there are way too many places where the coloring is just not working. Uh, at least the color palette looks good so i'm going to give the coloring on this book and i'm i'm just want to say i'm only going to give it as high a score as i'm going to give it because of the limitation of using newsprint if i were to judge this on other books that were on better quality paper this thing would get buried but the color quality Based on the fact that you're on newsprint, uh, we're going to get three out of five stars. So hit the plus key and let's add a three in there. Uh, this brings us to lettering. Uh, again, the lettering, just like last time, does not have borders. And then it does have borders. And then it doesn't have borders. The lettering is inconsistent, but at least the lettering makes a little bit more sense this time around versus the lettering in the previous book. There are some grammatical and spelling errors as far as the lettering is concerned, and I don't know whether or not I should put the blame for that on the writing, or I should go ahead and put that on the blame for the letter themselves. But, once again, this is an issue that could have been resolved if an editor had actually gone through this book before going to print and make sure that there were none of these problems. But none of these comics, well, correction, few of these comic gates guys have any uh, editorial and consequently this has had a pervasive negative impact on the overall final product of their books. So I'm going to go ahead and give the lettering two 
out of five stars. So hit plus sign again, hit the two. All right, so two out of five stars. I, I really wish, I mean, if the black border was on the actual individual text boxes, you know, the text, uh, the dialogue balloons, I would have at the very least given this as a three. But this inconsistency of whether or not they're going to be using borders or not, incredibly frustrating. And as you go through this, you know, jo Johnny should have a better and more unique text balloon for himself. He really should. Uh, again, something like Spawn, where it actually really differentiates him in Phantasm form uh, versus your average mook that surrounds him. Uh, again, the lettering, it, it's its not that great. And you tie in the lettering, particularly with the piss poor experimental panel work, and it just negatively impacts everything. So yeah, lettering, two. Uh, this brings us to the story. And I gotta admit, going to the front of the story, you have these guys in this armored car... And they're talking about how one of their kids uh, wants to go ahead and dress up like Darth Vader. And there's this reminder that, you know, hey, even though Darth Vader was the bad guy, he did turn around and save the world, you know, save the galaxy in the end. He, in the end, he was redeemed as a good guy. But uh, that redemption, you know, came at the cost of his life. So this is a nice reminder that Johnny may be a criminal, but he is not the villain. And you get that right from the very first page. And so when you get to some of these later aspects of the story, um, yeah, I mean, you empathize with Johnny who wants to try to do good for his city it's just that the city is so corrupt, the only way he can be a good guy is to be a criminal. And he still is a bad guy, but, you know, he has, I would say, overall good intention. Uh, the writing is very truncated. Uh, this feels, again, like a 12-issue series compressed down into one large format book. This, this, this is... Basically, imagine a year's worth of comic books squoozed down to giant size X-Men number one. You know, that, that's what this is. And as a consequence, you feel like there was stuff cut out. It feels like a movie where it, it feels like Justice League. It feels like the Whedon cut of Justice League. You can tell huge parts are missing. And I think that what's going on here is that Patrick Thomas Parnell comes up with the story idea. He's working with Evan Posios in order to put together the story. He's putting together all this artwork, basically using the Marvel method. And I think that Posios is coming in and redoing the text balloons, the dialogue, to try to make all this make sense in the end. The problem is we still don't have any editorial, and because of a lack of editorial, it is nowhere near as coherent or good as it could be. It is better, however. This is a better overall book than the first one. The first one, again, is like a two at best, as far as the story is concerned. It's the character that's interesting. This actually does have a coherent story, and it make they, they follow through on that story from beginning to end. We don't have an issue where we don't know who's talking from one scene to another. Because they're using borders uh, for the spirits, these guys here, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see what I was pointing at, but these guys here, the spirits, they have their own unique text boxes for when they're speaking. It makes it a lot easier to differentiate who they are now. This is just a better written book overall compared to the previous book. The only problem is it still only gets you a three out of five stars. Uh, Johnny Phantasm continues to be a series where you actually need more pages. You need better explanation of what's going on. Some areas of the book feel rushed or truncated. 
Uh, we feel like there's scenes that are supposed to be in there that are missing. And we have to, in our own little minds, infer what should be going on here. So, yeah. So, Johnny Phantasm 1985 gets a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It is a below average comic book. Uh, big reason for the below average is that the cover is not very strong. Uh, it doesn't sell the book on its own, uh, nor does the cover really communicate. Th this goes overboard. We've talked about how the cover should communicate what's going to happen in the story. This cover is literally a summary of the story. You've gone too far. You've overcorrected, Tom. It, it, it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work. Again, the coloring could be better if it was on higher quality paper. But the biggest issue with this is the experiment failed, failed experiment with panel work inside of the comic book. I need something a little bit more traditional. I'm not saying that you have to have six square boxes in there, but I need to be able to follow your story. When I can't tell if I have to go up and down, left or right, or go into a circle in order to understand your story, you're doing something wrong. So that would be the biggest thing I would say to Patrick Thomas Parnell. Stop experimenting with panel work. It ain't working out for you. So that is Johnny Phantasm 1985, 2.5 out of 5 stars. To those of you who are hoping for a better score, so was I. But we didn't get that today. Regardless, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget to follow me on social media. And with that said, I will talk to you next time.